Welcome back to another episode of Salesforce Mojo. Today we're going to be talking about custom property types. Now if you're familiar building Lightning Web Components, you're familiar with creating properties or attributes inside of those Lightning Web Components to give your components more flexibility. Today though, we're going to be talking about custom property types. I've been really keeping my eye on this feature for a while as it's been going out through beta and pilot. And today we're actually going to go through how do we create custom properties that emulate some of the standard components that come inside of Experience Builder. So if you're interested in learning how to make your components more flexible and easier to configure in Experience Builder and other places inside of Salesforce, stay tuned, we're gonna jump right into it. So first, just a level set, what are Lightning Web Component Properties? These properties allow us to modify the component, to pass variables in, to uh, give text colors, labels, feature flags, and much more. And you might be wondering, well, why would I do this if I could just do this in code? Well, that's the thing is not everyone's a developer and not everyone needs to go into the component to make changes. So Salesforce has given us these properties to give us the ability to make modifications. Uh, so I can easily pass in some text and that will automatically update uh, onto the Experience Cloud site or into Salesforce, depending on where we're doing it. We're gonna be focusing primarily on Commerce Cloud and Experience Builder. You can see on the right-hand side, we have a product detail um, component, and this component has several text fields, uh, which we can absolutely do uh, in the current version today. Uh, but then you can also see that everything is wrapped inside of this accordion, which makes it really nice and easy to configure, especially if you have a lot of attributes. Well, up to recently, this really hasn't been possible. We haven't had the flexibility to modify the uh, properties UI, but now with some recent updates, we do. So we're actually gonna talk through how we can do each one of these and implement them. But first, you are probably familiar with the standard properties. The standard properties are string, integer, Boolean, content reference, and color. And you can do quite a bit with these standard properties. With some of the new lightning properties here, we can see that we have some of the, the existing ones we had before, like Boolean, but we also have uh, date, date time, we have, uh, again, integer, we have a multi-line text, we have number rich text, uh, text and URL. So right out of the gate, the standard lightning properties uh, that are now available will give us much more flexibility in creating properties that are meaningful, uh, meaning you no longer need to use a string uh, to give the user the ability to put in a URL. You can do a URL, uh, which will give you the validation that you absolutely need uh, in those properties. So why don't we start with a use case here? Let's say that on the product detail page or PDP, uh, I want to be able to create a banner, but I want this banner to be uh, flexible because some of my sites uh, need specific requirements and some of them need a slightly different one, but I want one component that can be used across multiple of them. Well, that's what our use case is today. I need the ability to style my component within the experience builder. I'd like the ability to update the content uh, in rich text formatting. And I'd like to be able to show this component with kind of a, a timestamp of when was the last time I updated this. So those requirements right there can be accomplished, of course, with the Lightning Web Component, but we wanna be able to do it with a Lightning Web Component that has these properties that dynamically allows us to make changes without having to go back to the code every time we wanna change something about it. So how are we actually going to do that? Well, let's walk through a couple of steps we're going to have to do. Number one is we're going to need to build an editor component. So an editor component allows us to build a lightning web component that will be exactly what the editor will look like for some of the, the specializations that we're going to do here. The second is we're going to build an experience property type bundle. And this experience property type bundle allows us to use that lightning web component and make it referenceable uh, inside of our lightning web component that we're going to build for the UI. And the last one is we're going to build the actual PDP banner component. So you can see there's a little bit of setup before we actually get into building the component that's going to be shown to our UI. These editor components can be built once and then reused as many times as we want. So uh, creating these and then being able to use them again and again is a good strategy to cut down on the development you need uh, to build these uh, components and editors. So with that, let's jump into our org and into the actual code. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do here is I want to actually show you the end state so you know what we're working towards. So you can see we're logged into our instance and we're in Experience Builder and we're on the product detail page. And you can see we have this component called PDP Banner. 
uh, and it gives us a you know a little day at the top and a little bit of text here. This is my custom component. So let's actually click into this component, and you'll notice right away that it looks quite a bit different than other components um, that are custom because we're using some of this customization uh, for the custom properties. The first thing you'll notice is that we have our standard color up here at the top. That doesn't change. Uh, we have that as kind of the background color. Then down below we have our text alignment and this text alignment actually controls the text alignment. Uh, so if we click left here, it's all gonna be left and dented. If we click center, it'll be center and right and so on. Uh, that's obviously not a standard uh, capability. So we're gonna show how we actually customize that in our code here in a second. Then we have our new uh, lightning date uh, property here. This is just one of the new standard properties. And you can see I put in 827 and that's actually what is showing up here on the last updated. Next down we have our banner content. And this is pretty exciting because it's actually a rich text field here. So I don't need to do any special flags to have it underlined or not. I can simply come in here and say, okay, well, I don't want this underlined anymore. Maybe I want it um, striked through. And that update here will actually translate into uh, the component. Um, it just takes a little bit of time uh, for it to load sometimes, but, uh, but that rich text field allows us to actually modify this in quite, um, quite a bit of detail and also embed you know, videos and, and links in here, uh, which is very powerful. The next one down is a, a section I'm really excited about because I've tried to do this in the past and the capabilities just weren't there. Uh, but we actually have these tabs down below that allows us to control the border uh, size. And you can see that we have some drop downs here and what type, dashed or not, the weight, the radius. We can even come into size of the component itself and say, you know, I only want the height to be 100 pixels or I want it to be 10. Um, and so we can really, you know, create anything in here. So there's actually two really special things about this. One is that we are able to get this tabbed view here, uh, which is pretty powerful. And then the, also that we have this drop down capability where we can make more control over uh, really any feature we want. Uh, now I will say that this is one version of this, but you could also do like the accordion view. Uh, for instance, if you uh, come down to our product detail purchase options that I showed uh, in the little uh, slide I had earlier, we can instead make an accordion view of this, uh, which uh, might be uh, better for our needs. So it really just depends on what you actually need to. Uh, but now you have all the capabilities to really make this modular and configurable. All right, so now that we've seen the end state here, let's actually hop into our code and see how this was accomplished. All right, we're in our VS code now here, and you can see that we're in our PDP banner component. Now, one of the first things that I always do in these components is put a master label in. It just makes the experience that much better. If you're actually in Experience Builder and you go over to your side section and when you see your components, you actually see a, a real name here instead of your API name. It just makes the experience better. So if you're looking to kind of up your game and how to make Lightning Web components, especially in Experience Builder, that's a must have. Uh, and then you move down to your targets. This is really where the magic happens in the target configs. So you can see here that we have a standard color one that's uh, been around for a long time. Uh, but then as we go down, all the other ones are, are really custom or uh, net new. So you can see here we have our text alignment and it is actually referencing an editor called alignment uh, CPE uh, or content pro or custom property editor. Um, and then we have our lightning data type. We have our lightning rich text type and we have a new uh, type called C layout properties. Uh, so I'll actually, I'll go into uh, both of these because this is actually where we see the customization come into play. Um, and then we'll come back to this component uh, in just a moment. Why don't we first go to uh, C uh, alignment CPE, which if we go up, this is actually a lightning web component. And you can see that's called uh, alignment CPE up here. And if we go into the uh, HTML, you can see that it's pretty quite straightforward. It's uh, just the text alignment here. Uh, we have a couple of buttons in here. And if we go into our JavaScript, you can see we're handling left, right, center, and right here. Uh, and just some normal JavaScript that will allow us to kind of handle uh, some of those actions uh, and then some CSS to be able to uh, kind of make the but uh, buttons and borders look correctly. Uh, and then we're actually targeting this as a lightning property editor. So with just a simple example here, you can see that the possibilities uh, are really endless for how we actually uh, could customize 
the property editor because now we're just creating lightning web components that really can look and feel like uh, whatever we want. So if you wanted the ability to have like, you know, a, a slider for instance, or a time frame, uh, you could do quite a bit of that uh, inside of this uh, area here. The next section, if we go back to our um, metadata is we have this type of C layout property. Now this is just a tad bit more complicated here and we actually need two different things in order to make this happen. The first one is we actually need a new component called border style dropdown CPE and this is to give us the ability to customize the dropdown. So if we just hop back over to our experience builder for a second we have two customizations kind of nested inside of each other here. We have a dropdown, which you will notice from the list before, that's actually not a standard uh, lightning property type. Uh, so we have that customization, and then we have the ability of this tab set that's the customization as well. So if we hop back over into our code here. The first thing is we're actually going to show the a border style dropdown CPE here. And again, this one's pretty straightforward, JavaScript wise, HTML wise, it's a lightning combo box here. Uh, gives us the ability to uh, put in these options and uh, really that's it. Uh, but if we go up into this new uh, type here or this new metadata called experience property type bundles, uh, and I have a folder in here called layout properties or component, uh, you'll see that it has two files. It has a design file and it has a schema file. So inside of the design file, this gives us the ability to uh, mock up exactly what the layout should be uh, of this experience property type bundle set here. And you'll see that we have this section at the very top called property renders first. And this property renders here is uh, if you have a customization. All right, so in here we have a border style and this border style references the border style down below and it also references the component we built. So you can see inside of the view here, we have this lightning tab set layout and we have inside the lightning tab set layout, we have two different um, tabs. We have the borders tab right here. Then we have the size tab right here and uh, you can see the properties and the children underneath it. So these ones are all standard. They're the, the lightning property layout height and width. Uh, and then if you go up into uh, the border style here, it is referencing back to this definition, which gives us the ability to inject more customization into the tab set customization that we just walked through. And then from a schema side, this allows us to actually specify uh, what types are being used. Uh, and which ones are required if so. I'm not gonna go through all the requirements and um, the, the different types, in, but I'll leave some documentation uh, inside of the video so that you can actually go and look up more here afterwards. So now that we've done that, let's actually hop back over into our component and get to the actual JavaScript here. So you can see that we're doing a couple of things that are really important if you plan on doing any type of these strategies here. Uh, we of course have our at API for all of the properties that are required in order for us to pull this information into our JavaScript from the uh, property metadata over here. Um, and once we've done that, you can see that we have a couple of different things we're doing down here in order to implement this. So the first thing is that we have our uh, layout properties here and we're getting all the layout properties, uh, which is from that customization. So this is this section down here, this layout properties. And we're pulling the um, JSON in, we're parsing it, and then we're actually uh, using that information uh, to uh, actually get down to the border style and border weight and border radius. Uh, and we're setting the styles down here using uh, that information if the layout properties uh, is available or not and then we're just applying these properties. Um, so you can see that's that's pretty straightforward and then the same thing kind of with the text alignment, we're just pulling that information in. Um, so for any of the new lightning data types, uh, which are um, you know date and rich text and any of the other ones I showed earlier, you can simply just uh, pull those in and use them as you're used to. Um, text alignment uh, is the same if you have an editor here. It's just going to give you the value of you know string or whatever the type is. Um, but for the more complicated ones where we're defining a new type, 
meaning it's not a string or a, a date or rich text. Uh, it is a little bit more complicated, and so you can see that we actually are are doing that strategy I talked about earlier, uh, the sets and the gets for the layout properties in order to properly get that information and apply it to our component. But once you've done that correctly, then your component will look something like this, where you have the ability to have some customization on text alignment, uh, drop downs, tab sets, accordions if you want to, and then of course the rich uh, text as well. So the last thing I'll just mention here is that Salesforce has done a pretty decent job in this uh, document here explaining uh, some of the examples I walk through the day. Uh, this is a little bit old here. You can see it was still in beta in this last release here, uh, but you can go through the document and really see a lot of the details here. Uh, and then of course, I'm gonna put this into uh, my repository for Salesforce Mojo so you can actually have the code as well. So that's it for today. Hopefully you guys found it useful to kind of go through uh, the custom property types and see how you can kind of supercharge your components and make them more flexible and easier to use. And some of the strategies to really use the new lightning data types, um, but also uh, use custom editors as well. Thanks for watching.